Who for you is the toughest opponent in your career? In Jiu Jitsu, I face all the best. I fought to everybody, you know. Yeah. It is hard to say to say one name, but I might go to Lucas Lepre. <laughs> process when it comes to learning new techniques or you know progressing your technique from this and like figuring it out Do you ha is yeah so we have the, the time that you know like my game is a universal game you know everybody can do it you know like I focus a lot of on the details and simple things that to be precise what I'm doing uh, that I can neutralize my opponents you know better and sometimes I you know I do something that they can follow me a little bit until I find the space that they cannot escape anymore. That's like you know, my main focus. About like, you know, studying new techniques. I do this at my academy, you know, when I train with my students. Sometimes I do something that I fail and then I start figure out the ways that I can do other ways, you know, and one, posi one, one, one position push other positions, right? And uh, yeah, so that's the way like I, st I study most of the time. So, um, so, so with that, like for example, in your academy, um, you know, like in our minds, like you are the black belt, you know, like, you know, so how do you keep yourself sharp? Like um, in a gym setting, I, we assume that you rarely find an opponent who's really your match, but then like how do you train yourself to always be sharp regardless of your training partners? It's kind of like I, I usually I train every day, twice a day. It doesn't matter if I'm gonna have some tournaments I had or not. I always I like to train, I like to, to push. Um, of course close to the tournaments I intensify a little bit more, but usually I train twice a day. Uh, but uh, you know my students like I have been trained them to to give me a really good training uh, since I opened my academy. So today, like, they give me a really good, you know, training already. Um, I don't have much black belts on my academy, so I have my academy just for four years. I'm starting getting there. But uh, everybody there, like, you know, the lower belts are really tough already. But I always push myself, like, putting myself in certain situations that, uh, can be really hard for me to get out or to pass. I let, let's say one of my students is really good on the lasso. I let the guys put on me on the lasso, put me on the situation that I'm gonna have a hard time to get out. So that's like, when you train smart, you know, you, you don't need to train with the black belt or champ every day, you know. It's good to train so, so, sometimes that you can test yourself, but it's not every day, you know, like, uh, just you have to know the way you train. So, what kind of competitor are you? I'm like, uh, I'm pretty like, I have the adrenaline, you know, but I try to control that fear that I have. Everybody has a fear, you know, but sometimes like we can control better, like some people can control better than the others. That's pretty normal. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like, everybody say, look, you're so calm, you know, when you compete, it looks like nothing happened, but inside, I'm exploding, you know, <laughs> but I try to hold that, so, and then if I start losing that adrenaline, that's, you know, that fear, like, is because that doesn't matter much to me, right, so if, if, if something matters for you, you're going to have that fear that you might going to fail, you know. What changes in your routine do you apply during competition time? Like, do you do something special for? I do like, uh, yes, I do like uh, conditioning. I have uh, my coach uh, is from New York City, Kevin Perec, KP. So I have been working out with him for the last ten years. Um, so even though that I moved from New York to to open my academy, uh, he still like helped me on my program. 
so and then he goes to Charlotte, I go to New York. I always like to stay very close to each other. He is one of my best friends that I have it. Uh, so yeah, so I work out maybe two, three times uh, per week, you know. Uh, I think it's important to include that on the, on the training, on the routine. Plus some, condi some uh, uh, cardio as well, you know. I, that's help, but it's not like, Jiu-Jitsu is everything, you know. I prefer do more Jiu-Jitsu than do my conditioning. I think conditioning for me is like, help me, a little bit my explosion, you know, like more like to prevent injuries as well. So recently you've had to fight much heavier opponents and for a lot of us, like Filipinos or girls in general, we're a lot smaller than the partners that we usually spar with. So what is your approach against going someone against someone who's bigger and heavier? So do you play your game or do you play smart and you know? I think you have to play both, right? I think it's like you have to play a game because I think that's important you be well rounded, you know, be completely and understand all areas because if you if you like fight really big guy you're not putting them like let's say you like to play uh, spider guard maybe the guy's gonna smash you or if you like to play ha half guard maybe the guy's gonna put a weight on you you know you have to be able to uh, play certain games cer certain guards that if you need to pull guard you keep yourself away from your opponent you know and be able to uh, to, to be able like go to the back, you know, have to play smart as well, right? And see the best game uh, to go against these, these big okay. guys. So, lastly, um, how do you balance all of it? Like teaching, time for your family, time for yourselves, competition. Like, what do you do to balance it all? Yeah, so to find a balance is for sure is the hardest part. Uh, you know, like recently, you know, I have my daughter now, so to be able to to teach training for a higher level is really tough. Have uh, my affiliations that I have to give support, my academy, uh, you know, my wife, my daughter. So you know, sometimes it's pretty tough. Do my conditioning. You know, I wish like the day has like more than you know, 24 hours. <laughs> But you know, you you find time. You know, when you want, you find the time for everything, right? So that is the most important that you have. A lot of people give a lot of excuse. You know, I don't do this because of this. You know, and find some excuse for, and then they start believe on that. You know, on that excuse. So you have to, when you want something, you find a way to do it. Os, thank you very much. Thank you, Manila. Hi, I'm Chastin. Um, I had a great time at the seminar. The professor was um, really good. The details were amazing. And he actually went around and he was very, very helpful and um, even to lower belt. So that's awesome. I really enjoyed the seminar. This is actually the second time I attended the uh, Lucas Lepre seminar. And as always, he blew my mind with his guard game, passing, and uh, witnessing him um, grow with the uh, black belts, brown belts, so it was um, high skilled techniques and it never failed to blow my mind. I attended Professor Lepri's seminar also last year. Nothing much has changed from both years that I've attended, but what I do realize, um, getting to know him, getting to train with him, was that he's someone who's very passionate about the sport, that you can see that through the years of his, his experience, it's something that shines through, something that you know that he's really good at. And for one thing, other than being good at BJJ, um, I believe his personality is also very light. So it makes things easier for us to understand. And I appreciate that he's someone, with, he's someone who's very lighthearted and has a sense of humor as well. So thank you for the opportunity. Right. Uh, amazing seminar by Professor Lucas Lepri. Techniques were amazing. It ranged from a little bit more basic, basic movements, to a little bit more advanced. And the way he teaches is, you know, from one situation to another, he basically covers all bases. So, you know, as long as you, you know, try to work within the system, then you're definitely gonna get one of those things that he taught. Also, he's like super nice guy who was just going around, 
making sure everyone's doing the techniques properly. He would go with the white belts, go with the black belts, go, go with everyone. So amazing seminar as usual. Oh man, you know, if you miss this seminar, next time he's in Manila, you better go check it out. Like my, uh, money well spent, that's for sure. So again, Professor, thank you so much for taking the time to teach at Cabrina Manila and you know, like in the Philippines, man. Thank you so much.